to dear dr uh, stevens uh, bring in all the wishes and greetings from uh, all the faculty members of speed medical institute for uh, scoring a very good rank and a great performance in neat ss 2021 uh, in specialty of mch neurosurgery and congratulations to you thank you thank you very much sir uh, i i sincerely extend my gratitude towards uh, the speed team not only all the professors not just the professors you in particular the neurosurgery professors even uh, the technical team and uh, people work everyone associated with uh, speed because i have had a lot of technical issues and a lot of uh, small minor queries that were solved right away not even late, quite late in the night so i'm very happy with the feedback that i got uh, especially from the technical team and uh, with re- regards to the subject and the classes uh, i can't say how much the material that was provided uh, in the app uh, helped me in my scores because i remember giving my uh, iniss uh, paper and i wasn't exactly fully prepared at that point so to say that my preparation was around 40 to 50% at that particular moment then i realized okay maybe my preparation was not good or whatever uh, i thought i thought i just uh, had to relook my strategy then i went back and uh, did the material provided in speed again and i realized that almost like 60 to 80% of the questions that were asked in those exams were like almost directly from the material or it was somewhere in the material that you had to just be uh, attentive for so the last uh, one one and a half months like post especially iniss i ensured that did the speed material at least twice so i remember uh, seeing one video of uh, yours sir like you had posted one uh, video uh, as to how to prepare for uh, neat ss i think for the last 10 days or like some some video i remember i see uh, you told me that if you are working somewhere you need to like uh, put uh, take leave and uh, start with your preparation or if you are uh, already in the mode of preparation you need to uh, revise uh, again you told me 3 to 5 times i couldn't manage 3 to 5 times I, in my time i could manage only two times because i am a little slow learner so i thought okay i will go with uh, what i know yes sir so that was very helpful and consistency was key sir. postpone yes sir yes sir i remember uh, i uh, attending few of your uh, crash course classes unfortunately i couldn't attend most of them live uh, i had to like watch the recorded videos uh, because of uh, time constraints i have been working also so i am actually a freshy uh, as in like i just passed my ms uh, general surgery in uh, june uh, 2021 so sir i did uh, my undergrad from uh, uh, kasturba medical college mangalore manipal university and uh, post graduation in ms general surgery from uh, jss medical college mysore ah, very good excellent We both are great institutions uh, yeah yes sir uh, so yeah i uh, i still remember the, i think during my pg preparation or something i, I remember people telling me that uh, you had to read standard textbooks uh, and uh, you had to like you know understand the language of the questions that the, that is generally asked in all these competitive exams so i made it a point to read at least some part of the textbook uh, at some point in the residency so i think that also helped and uh, obviously the material especially the uh, key to retaining concepts for me was uh, as soon as i uh, read any particular topic i went back and solved the mcqs Uh, both the topic wise mcqs as well as like regular uh, uh, grant tests so i realized that like initially i wasn't scoring well in those grant tests so when i started off i had started off uh, scoring only like uh, 50% or something of that sort uh, so what you, uh, gen- as days passed on like with my preparation also i realized that like i have i've been consistently improving so that was uh, quite helpful for me that great so i i i kind of enjoyed my preparation phase i mean i was i don't know there was something different about this particular preparation compared to the previous years yes exactly i mean this, I mean, this is what I mean we basically want I mean because you need to just enjoy I mean it should not be a burden 
and uh, we should exactly. make uh, sure that they learn and also be happy. So that's what is the theme of this program. And uh, and it, I mean, I'm very happy that uh, when you finished your uh, MS, uh, which month? I finished in uh, June, June end, end of June to, uh, 2021. So five, six months you are able to... Uh, Yes, sir. I, so to be frank, uh, my practical exam was delayed because of COVID. We had finished theory, but the uh, practical exam got cancelled and like got postponed for a month or so. So I utilized utilize that time to start my preparation. Uh, I got uh, interested in neurosurgery like quite early in residency, but I wasn't aware of how to prepare or whatever. But uh, after I'm, uh, after my theory exams in MS neurosurgery, I thought, okay, I'll just give it a try. So uh, so I started preparing May. Then I took a two-month gap uh, for my uh, practical exam and then post-exam I had to, I had a little uh, <laughs> layoff time. I just uh, thought I'll just relax for some time. After that, immediately I had joined uh, SRship in my uh, uh, post-graduation college only. And then uh, I found that like work-life balance was okay for uh, good in this uh, particular institute. So I thought I'll just continue with the preparation just like that. So I ended up... Uh, uh, preparing quite a bit but uh, I, I that's what that INISS was a shock to me because uh, the questions were very familiar it, it just needed uh, uh, myself to be a little more uh, prepared so that's when I realized that my strategy was correct just that I need to put in a little more effort so I continued with the same strategy uh, I, I remember I told you regarding that your video of yours that you had to finish the material at least twice or thrice. I didn't understand the importance then, but like as as the exams like got nearer and nearer, I realized that I was going in a good track. Uh, and uh, especially the mock test, I remember like two three days prior to the uh, neat uh, SS, I gave one mock test. I had uh, scored about 80, 82 percent or something. So that was a good confidence booster for me. So even the day prior to the exam, also I was like confident okay if i'm getting somewhere close to 80 percent over here then it means in the exam at least i will score 60 percent or 65 percent over there no matter what the paper is and uh, to be frank the paper was a bouncer the neurosurgery paper was a horrible paper uh, i couldn't uh, uh, fathom how to <laughs> uh, get, guess my performance after that uh, paper because i thought I, I i'll do gender surgery at least very well but the gender surgery paper also was very tough so it's not a paper at all. It's not a general surgery paper. Yeah, exactly. There was, it was more of uh, pediatric uh, surgery and pediatric urology. Two subjects that I don't know head and tail. Uh, so I somehow I managed to get through. So I guess uh, I was in the right space. In fact, I I, I didn't know like uh, uh, how to uh, gauge my uh, paper. I didn't know whether I had done well or I had done uh, really badly. I was expecting uh, somewhere less than 150, uh, a rank of less than 150. But this was uh, quite a pleasant surprise. So I'm very, very, very happy uh, and very thankful. Uh, I remember, I, I keep coming back to that, that video of yours that you told me that you have to finish the material uh, at least three to five times. So I took it, took it up as a challenge. I remember one of my friends calling and telling me that I don't know if you're serious with your preparation or uh, yeah, he was telling uh, you you need to you have a good chance you should be uh, serious with your preparation. So I took that upon as a challenge and like uh, tried to finish as much as possible. So to be frank, I finished uh, quite a bit of your material. So that helped a lot. That helped a lot. It's not just the materials, just the uh, answering questions also was very 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 important. So if uh, if I have to say something to people uh, who are preparing, it should be that like no matter how much theory they read, it's the sol uh, solving question part that helps you in the exam or uh, helps you retain the concept. That is what is important. And consistency is very, very important. You should not let it go. That is what I felt after giving this uh, particular exam. And I'm fortunate, I guess, uh, to have scored this rank. Uh, so I'm very, very, very happy with, uh, with that. Great. Great. Now, when did you start actually? When when your preparation started? My preparation, to be uh, very frank, actual preparation started in July. I started preparation, especially the neurosurgery part in July. General surgery part, I was quite confident because I read through resi uh, residency, especially in my final year. So I was very uh, confident about the general surgery part. So I like uh, had to brush up uh, general surgery like three to four hours per day. So I used to keep general surgery for the la later part of the day, around 9 to 10 o'clock in the night when I had like free time. So 
throughout the day i would read neurosurgery and like towards the end of the day i'll read general surgery so that's how i split up my preparations <laughs> very nice excellent now uh, so what is the one message that you want to convey to the aspirants of mch neurosurgery mch in particular is a very doable field it's uh, neat exams with uh, especially mch exams is a very doable field uh, this is something that i have realized like as we have given exams neat uh, ug pg and uh, mch so if anyone has any doubts whether they could achieve something or not uh, i would sincerely advise them that it's uh, it's not so difficult you just need a little bit of focus consistency and the determination i remember failing quite a, quite a few times in my neat pg exams uh, i had actually taken a two year drop so uh, because of that my determination this time was very strong i i knew what the mistakes i made in neat uh, pg exams so i i realized that i i will not let myself repeat those mistakes so consistency focus and determination sir if these are the three keywords so you have to consistently improve you have to be determined to get a rank and for getting a rank you need to be very focused with what you want especially neurosurgery neurosurgery is a very demanding field and the neat ss exam for neurosurgery is a very doable exam because the competition is not so tough or so tight uh, when it comes to mch uh, neurosurgery exams so if, if a, a little extra effort every day will definitely help people pull through the exams great now uh, see we had a discussion on various aspects now when you look as as of now it was the migration that you could see a shift where those days people finish mch and there is no value mbbs there is no value for mbbs without doing an md and ms there is an absolutely no value for an mbbs just mbbs an entry level exam and uh, and with with that uh, the people don't survive at all then they go to md and ms today md and ms does not have it appears like that it, it appears md ms uh, does not have a value and i am telling you the perception uh, reality is different see the reality is different i mean with, with mbbs itself you can live uh, comfortably also I mean where you have to live um, where you have to survive and uh, comfortable life still exists i am not saying no to it but the perception how the perception today is now the ms has become like an mbbs and without an, an mch and uh, people uh, is not not willing even one person who is studying for surgery itself he himself is not satisfied with completing an mch so mch has become a must today that's what i am trying to tell you yes sir <laughs> uh, this is something uh, that uh, i guess i realized uh, during residency that uh, maybe there is something lacking in me or like i need to push myself higher, higher. so i guess i realized this what, what, what you were saying that you no know, now this creates this creates an inferiority complex in a person without an mch he feels so oh, i am not a surgeon see that kind of a, uh, i mean it is i am telling you it is hypothetical actually but still it is hypothetical but that the hypothetical hypothetical thing is increasing day by day yes, sir uh, this that, that i i totally agree with you sir it, uh, the fact that uh, it is hypothetical because when i was doing residency i i had this uh, thought in my head that mch is a must but uh, as i started working as a senior resident i realized that maybe ms would have been better but uh, by this time the decision was taken it was far, too far ahead in the scene i'll tell you what general surgeons are missing i'll tell you those days when we finished general surgery in private they used to call us to do appendix in the, previously now in our era in, in in my generation one generation previous to you that the lab which came in place so where the young surgeons were trained in lab so there is a, there is a time where the entry of lab training of lab was in much higher uh, degree than what is today for you so what happened is we used to go for uh, small cases uh, like lap appendectomy lap cholecystectomy and uh, lap assisted vaginal hysterectomy then uh, yes. i mean hernia thyroid small general surgery cases they they will give 3000 rupees 2000 rupees 5000 rupees in a cover and we used to sign a voucher and get it and every day in irrespective of money we go and operate we want cases we want to operate yes earning and also joy of surgery both was there yes 
earning mainly earning and joy both the satisfaction of being a surgeon and doing multiple cases 5 6 general surgery cases one hemorrhoid one fissure last we do and come back and uh, and said okay then we are satisfied we have done 4 5 cases today or 3 cases today and per month we did almost 30 40 cases per day something like that was there that i feel the generation is missing it and the, the joy of uh, the joy of general surgery itself is lost you tell me after you finish your mch neuro surgery after you finish your mch neuro surgery there will not be a call where there are five, six nursing homes. Come on, you do a bar hole here, you do a tumorectomy here. People don't call that way. Yes, People don't call that way. Once you finish an MCH, you are put a, you are put in a system and you are put in a structure that you will be institutionalized. You will be in a trauma center. You will be in a high volume center, a tertiary referral center where uh, there are enough of backup on the team. Only there you can operate. So you will be put into a system. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm not saying this is not correct, but the trend is that you should do back to back. There is a trend today. I'm not saying uh, MCH is customary, uh, but the trend today is if I finish MS, next day I should finish MCH. That is a trend today. Yes, sir. That, that, that is a quite a, a rising trend, but uh, I feel in the next uh, 20 years, there will be a, a lot of demand for general surgeons as such. There won't be uh, much of demand for specialists because like current generation of senior surgeons, they are all MS general surgeons. And the people who are doing MS general surgery, they just see it as a stepping stone to the next uh, MCH. They just see it as a degree. That, that is why I feel like I, I, I remember during my preparation also, there was this uh, phase where the pattern got changed. I was uh, very upset uh, that the pattern got changed again to the neurosurgery uh, pattern, specialty pattern basically. Because I had lost like uh, approximately one and a half months of preparation time. So, but I feel that is the way uh, moving forward. The new pattern is actually a very good pattern. It just needed like proper uh, uh, information and prior intimation. Because this, uh, this puts a lot of weightage on your uh, three-year residency and the skills that you acquire during that time. So, I feel the, that pattern is the way forward. However, I'm just happy that <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You finished. You you have completed your innings, so you are comfortable now. <laughs> because I'll tell you, provided provided they are confining themselves to general surgery without asking pediatric surgery, with the pediatric uh, urology, and uh, exactly, sir. As soon as I saw those questions, I was like, I didn't know what I've signed up for. <laughs> so I wasn't very sure of uh, what I had uh, uh, given in my exam. So. So this is a uh, quite a bit of a pleasant surprise, and, but uh, I, 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 to be very frank, I was expecting a, a good rank, a, a rank that would fetch me a seat, but not this uh, uh, forty-four rank. So, so I'm very happy that way, and I would uh, pay my gratitude to your, to you and your institute, sir. Great doctor, and it is not my institute, and <laughs> it is institute <laughs> that is it is institute for made for students, and they are the students of the main bosses here and 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 they decide what what they have to uh, sir i have a few suggestions that uh, i had noticed from my question time basically i would uh, want uh, i i don't know if it's already in place because i couldn't find it uh, during uh, my preparation time uh, i would want a feedback system to be implemented for all those grant tests uh, because uh, i remember giving a few of my grant tests and like i wanted to know what was the like uh, explanation or if they somehow like due to some technical difficulty the explanation doesn't match the answer there needs to be some kind of feedback system uh, in place uh, to explain i think uh, that now what we have done for this is we have uh, introduced on this update a chat in the uh, social itself yes sir so what you can do is you can type the doubts suppose there is a question for that is an explanation given but uh, you have read in the book and from your knowledge basis, I feel this is not appropriate for this question. Then you raise a doubt in the same chat box itself, in the app. Yes, sir. And uh, we have made the faculties also to be in the chat to answer uh, those doubts immediately and not to take it uh, into a mail and to come back and do it or going into the WhatsApp or Telegram. No. Now today it is made in the chat itself you will raise the question as a student and the teacher has to complete and that gets stored as a tag name. Suppose suppose a neurotrauma, I mean EDH was a question you asked. 
and it is a question on a lucid interval and there was a doubt whether it is more common in SDH or EDH and if suppose there is a then it becomes a lucid interval EDH that becomes a tag name when you click your question and the explanation to the faculty is stored permanently and uh, one more was uh, uh, regarding uh, grant test ranks so basically uh, in the app the uh, version of the app that I was using uh, I used to see my uh, rank displayed immediately as soon as the test got over I would also want to uh, look back like at the performance of other people. Like I get a predicted rank or an expected rank. So I, I would uh, look back at like what the toppers are like. First ranker. What is a first ranker got it? Yeah, exactly. So what people above me are doing or how they are doing. So that way we, that way we could gauge the level of the question paper. You can so that facility is not there right now, but uh, this uh, feedback has given by a lot of students and that I have already given to the technical team, the development team is working on that. Probably in, uh, probably in a month's time, a month or two months time, it will get implemented. This feedback already in place. Yes, sir. because that, that was something that, uh, that, 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 that actually pushes you to perform better. So, and uh, one more thing was regarding the grant is, uh, uh, I realized that like, there are a lot of uh, questions that were very basic in nature, which was a very good aspect because you, you need to know the commonly asked questions. Uh, it, it's no use knowing uh, one question that everybody doesn't know. You need to know the question that like majority of the population is going to answer. So that was a, a very good aspect about the speed grant test. At that I am very uh, happy. The grant test was prepared by the faculty itself. I didn't have a uh, separate team for one question and faculty to take a class because yes. that becomes disproportionate. Uh, yes. to the, it will not be correlated to the what the standard of textbook they teach and somebody is picking up a question, he will be in a different perspective. So, it will not match and it both will go in a different direction. So, yes. all the faculties who took a class they personally took the question from the standard textbooks with reference and if suppose I have taken from general surgery, I made a point that I go personally to Sabiston and I read that and make a question and how it appears and how it will be looked upon by an examiner. Uh, that question, can, that paragraph can be converted into a question. That we used to imagine, then we used to uh, give the question. That's how we used to have that kind of a chat and a play in the class. Because we ourselves know when we prepare the question, that student will make a mistake in this option. They will fall for this option. So those kind of things which we did. And we felt students background could be from various backgrounds. One could have read, basics might be strong, basic may not be strong. So, to match the filling areas, so it was from basics to advanced. And one more thing was, uh, one more thing that I noticed was, like I remember talking to a few of my friends who were also preparing for various other uh, uh, specialities. So, when they used to discuss, especially general surgery questions with uh, me, I remember telling them that this question I've seen, I've uh, uh, read this already. Uh, then they asked me, okay, how come uh, you know this? I have realized that the general questions, sensor surgery questions in speed, particularly the, the ones that are picked up from shots are not concentrated upon by like other people. So this is a, a, a very uh, plus, uh, like very big uh, advantage for, especially in uh, central university exams where they concentrate a lot on all these uh, general surgery questions, the trauma questions. The, these are very beautifully explained in shots and uh, that was impressed upon by both your classes, your uh, grant tests your subject wise test and I'm very happy for that because I had that extra advantage with me when I used to answer such questions. Because only Schwartz gives guidelines. Exactly sir, exactly, exactly. It's such a wonderful book. <laughs> so what I used to do is, again it's a hype, the question will come from Bailey, Bailey and Sabiston. Then I was also in the back of the mind, I like Schwartz actually. And because uh, the, everything is oriented towards that and we cannot break the psychology. But at the same time, I want to introduce the best practices and aspects of Schwartz. So, I used to, what I used to do, whatever the guidelines and tables there, I pushed inside. Yes, that, that, that's one very good aspect, very uh, uh, nice thing that, that brings an advantage to us. Oh. <laughs> I think a lot of, so I'm, lot of things you observed very closely. So, very nice doctor, uh, great talking to you for a very long time and to have a long chat and uh, uh, whom you want to thank and whomever you want to thank in the platform, you can do so. We have built up your career. Uh, at, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank my parents first uh, because uh, they have undergone a lot of sacrifices 
so to make this happen i'm very happy uh, that i don't know whether i've done it for myself but i'm uh, happy that this has happened so i know that they are in a good space my parents and my family first along with that my colleagues both ug and pg who i work with or like help me in uh, one way or the other and uh, uh, people who have always inspired this confidence in me that i had the potential maybe i was just not working uh, very well so that uh, all those people i would like to thank and of course uh, speed team uh, i i cannot thank you enough because uh, this is the first time that i'm uh, cracking any competitive exam with uh, such a high rank so there there must be some difference uh, so i guess the difference is speed so i'm very happy for that and uh, above all i would like to thank all everyone who, who knew me at some point who made my life a little better great doctor nice uh, meeting you today and i wish you all the thank best you. for a great career in neurosurgery and uh, you're a great neurologist you will touch upon many lives and life saving field you are in right now and definitely you will do a great job for both for the speciality and also for the patient service and and many patients are going to get in thousands and lakhs and millions can get benefited out of your services for all that advanced wishes congratulations to you and keep going keep going as a surgeon be brave and be strong like a, i mean ever and i mean uh, always inspire keep inspiring us best wishes to you to your family members and all people around you thank you thank you very much sir thank you